Hello, welcome. It's James here. I hope you're doing very well. So today I want to talk about a brand new plugin by Sonox called Voca. It's all about trying to control the vocal so it helps to sit it nicely in the mix. It's all about auto adjusting the level so you don't have to do it yourself. And there's a whole bunch of other things in there too. So if you're interested, stick around and I'll take you through it. Okay, so let's dive right in. I'm going to take you through each section and then we can kind of hear it before and after. And uh, you get a little bit of an idea about what it does. Now, the very first part is probably the most useful thing, actually, which is this input section. Now, it auto adjusts the level. So if you can imagine when you're mixing a vocal, you might spend quite a lot of time adjusting the clip gain on the audio file just to try and make it hit the compressor a little bit better. You know, you're already doing a degree of manual compression, if you like, or or more importantly, level adjustment before it goes into plugins. And this is the best thing to do with vocals because vocals are very dynamic. They go up and down all over the place. So if you can c control that the best you can, then when it's hitting a compressor, it's just going to sound much nicer in the first place. So the compressor isn't working too hard where it doesn't need to. Thanks, you show... Uh, example on their website as you can see here this is a sort of thing that you might do with clip gain to try and control those peaks and troughs and to try and get it sitting at a good level but this is already doing it for you and this is why i'm spending a little bit of time on this first part because it's probably the most important part now instantly you're going to play the vocal so that's what i'm going to do now you're going to hear the vocal everything is completely bypassed but have a look at this knob and you're going to see what it's doing so that, that you're going to have like a little dial there which is showing you what it's doing to the level. So it's going to be either increasing it or decreasing it. Okay, so let's have a look. We find a new way then fall backwards again back to the start. Okay, so what you can see there is it was increasing the level a fair amount. So this wasn't recorded too aggressively as at a nom nominal level. So it's trying to bring that up to, to put it into a good point before it hits the compressor. Now, a lot of time what you can do is you can just leave that and it's going to go out throughout your song and it's just going to nicely adjust that as you go and you won't have to do the clip gain like I mentioned before, which is fantastic. But if, it's, if it is a little bit on the quiet side, like this one is kind of suggesting it is, you can adjust that volume. So you can either adjust this input level here or we'll watch that again and look at this little button here, optimize. So that's going to flash. OK, so let's watch that one more time. We find a new way, then fall backwards again, back to the start. OK, okay so now I hit optimize because basically what that's done is it's taken into account the, the type of part. It's taken into account the song. It's learning what type of part you're actually singing here. And it's kind of saying, actually, you know what? That's relatively low. Do you want to recalibrate? So now I've done that. If we look at this again, it's not going to be trying to pull the put push the level up as much. It's probably going to be dodging it down a little bit. So let's have a look. We find a new way, then fall backwards again. Back to the start. Right. So as you can see, what it's done there, instead of increasing the the level by you know that much, whatever that is, let's let's say it's six dp. Um, it's moved it. It's increased the level overall, and now it's just making finer adjustments. So it's just listening to those words. It's just listening to the peaks and troughs, and it's just adjusting it as, as it goes. So already it's in a much more optimized place. Right, that will just continue to do its thing, and it will do a lovely job. Next up, let's have a look at the compressor. So switch that on, and then you've got two different things that are going on here, and they're both very cool, and it's, it's, and it's really, really easy to use. Over here, we've got stabilize, and we've got squish. So as you go to stabilize, the stabilize is how much compression is applied. So as you increase that, let's just go like that, 100%, that's 100% compression applied. Okay, so let's just, let's just do that to start off with, and you'll start to hear what that's doing. We find a new way, then fall backwards again, back to the start. 
We try and we fake what we feel is okay. Is that all that you are? Right, so as you can hear, that's doing 100% compression. So quite a lot of compression, but it's actually not sounding too overly compressed. You can hear the compression doing its thing, but it's, not, it's just giving it that little bit more energy and it's controlling things a little bit more. So lovely. Next comes the other control, which is squish. Now this is adjusting the character of the compressor. So when you increase this, it's gonna be a faster attack times and more aggressive in its nature. Let's just have a little play with that and you can hear exactly what it's doing. It's gonna start to sound that much more gnarly as it goes on. We find a new way, then fall backwards again, back to the start. We try and we fake what we feel is okay. Is that all that you are? So now when that's absolutely slamming, it's even not as aggressive as it could be, but it's, it's now it's absolutely slamming and you can really hear the pumping of that compressor. Now it looks like there's lots of things going on under the hood here, but just so you know, in case, so you, you kind of get a bit of an idea of what's actually going on. They've mentioned in the manual, yes, I did read the manual, that it's the classic combo of an 1176 and an LA-2A, which lots of people, lots of people do. In fact, I, I often do it myself, Go and check out the video I did on tracking vocals with UAD plugins if you haven't done that already. I quite like it the other way around, but it doesn't matter. So you can hear that, that the, the characteristics of those compressors. So if we just bring that back, we're gonna, gonna go into a just a kind of nominal place that just feels about okay. We find a new way, then fall backwards again. Cool, sounded good. Right, next up is saturation. Saturation is fantastic. Again, I've done a video on that. You can go and check it out if you like. And it really helps to give the vocal some character and either sit it in or out of the mix. So this is where this focus part comes in. Before we do that, let's just look at saturate. So we're gonna go over here, we've got saturate at zero. So I'm just gonna bring in some saturation and then I'm gonna pull it out and you can hear what it's doing. We find a new way, then fall backwards again, back to the start. We try and we fake what we feel is okay. Is that all that you are? That's obviously quite a lot, but I wanted to just show you how aggressive it, it can be. But the really interesting part that you can do with this is the focus part. So this is gonna determine the type of saturation that it's using. So the way they frame it is basically they're, they're showing you whether it's gonna be in front or in the back of the mix, you know? So if it's gonna be in focus or out of focus. So if you're putting it on back and vocals, you might wanna push it back a little bit, distort it a little bit more. So then they're in their own space. If you want a lead vocal, you maybe want it to be a bit more upfront and kind of cutting through and just smashing you in the face a little bit more. Let's go over all the way to the left first. That's gonna be out of focus. It's gonna sound much warmer. It's gonna sound like it's got less definition, okay? We find a new way, then fall backwards again, back to the start. And then the other way, it's gonna be bringing it more in focus and it's gonna make it a little bit brighter. Okay, let's check that out. We find a new way, then fall backwards again, back to the start. We try and we fake what we feel is okay. Is that all that you are? You see how that really just brings a vocal right in your face and how, as I said, if you have the voc if you have it out of focus for the backing vocals, you're gonna get that separation between the two. So very, very cool indeed. And then lastly, well, yeah, there's one there's a couple more things, but this is the main last point that we've got in here is soften. So essentially this is controlling or adjusting the harshness and and the S's as well. So it's essentially a de-esser, but it's also looking at other frequencies as well that might be jumping out a little bit too much when you start doing all the processing. So let's have a little listen to that. I'm gonna have it fairly aggressive so you can hear what it's doing. We find a new way, then fall backwards again, 
back to the start we try and we fake what we feel is okay is that all that you are we find a new way then fall backwards again back to the start so as you can see, it's actually doing quite a lot there. It's relatively subtle, but it's doing quite a lot to the overall signal. Yes, it's controlling the S's, so it's a pretty good de -esser. But it's also when some of the compression, uh, when some of the saturation points start to just get a little bit too much, especially in the, the low mids, it just starts to kind of scoop those out. And it's not doing just one frequency, it's rolling with it. So it's kind of tracking it as it's going. So it's dynamically doing it. So it's very, very cool indeed. If you are enjoying this video, please help me out and do the thing which is really useful of hitting the like and subscribe and then you'll be notified of upcoming videos. Also, if you want some free stuff, we all like free stuff. If you want some free stuff, sign up to the mailing list below in the description. I'll send you an EQ cheat sheet as well as some, some one shots that you can use in your mixes. Okay. Thanks. Now you also have an output control here as well, which is the final output after all of the processing. So if you decide that actually it's lowered the volume a bit too much and you want to just bring that up or vice versa, you want to go the other way, you can absolutely do that there. So you have a little bit of control after the fact, or if you just want to make sure that it's going into your next plugin at a better level, that's what you can do there. Now, lastly, the other control we've got in here, which is very useful, is recording mode. So when you enable this, it basically puts it into a, a very low or near, near zero latency mode. So you can use this when you're tracking. It isn't doing quite as much. It's not doing the, the full functionality, if you like. It's not doing as much processing as, as it would do without this on. What it does mean is if you're actually tracking with a vocal and you just want to record with a little bit of compression or something which is a really good thing to do this will allow you to do that so check that if that's something that you really need to use very very cool feature so now if i just do a quick before and after you'll get a bit of an idea of what it's doing and just how it's making that vocal sound and how it basically just makes that vocal sit quite nicely it controls it very nicely and just makes it sound like it's mixed so yeah let's uh, let's have a listen before and after we find a new way, then fall backwards again. We find a new way, then fall backwards again. We find a new way, then fall backwards again. We find a new way, then fall backwards again. See, it is really doing quite a lot. I do, I like it a lot. Let's try it in context with the track. Here we go. We find a new way, then fall backwards again. Back to the start. We try. So did you notice in there, I feel like you can really hear it much more in context of a track, how the vocal was just kind of popping in and out because of the dynamics, it's just kind of moving up and down quite a lot when it's bypassed, but when everything is in, it's completely controlling that vocal and it's just sitting it right there and it's not deviating, it's not going anywhere, it's just sitting right there in your focus. Now, yeah, I'm compressing it a fair amount here. I've got a reasonable amount of, comp of saturation going on as well, but it's probably no less than I would do overall. So what I find really useful about this plugin, and I think where I'm gonna use it the most, is to really set the vocal up. So the auto level control is fantastic. That's probably my favorite feature. And then just using just a little bit of compression, a little bit of saturation, and also the soften as well, that will just put it into a nice place so then I can just feed it into other plugins and do any further process processing that I wanna do. So well done Sonox, I think you've done a killer, killer job. And that's it. What do you think? Have you tried it out yet? If not, I think you should definitely go and check it out. They do a free trial. So go and give that a go. But the problem with a free trial is chances are 
you'll try it, you'll like it, and then you'll want to keep it. But if you're looking at this video right now and it's just come up, they are doing an intro price, so it's worth getting it right now. Uh, I've got some other videos on recording vocals and whatnot, so go and check those out if you haven't already. Um, but anyway, um, thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye for now.